Canadians in pajamas. Science in pajamas. Science in pajamas. All right, so welcome back. Here we are. I told you in my last video when we were talking about the scientific method that the next one would be about variables in an experiment and how to set it up. That's what we're going to talk about. All right, so an experiment is a controlled test that you do to try and answer your question of why is something the way it is? So why is the sky blue? You set up an experiment and run that. Why was this towel blue? Set up an experiment and run it. Why do plants grow the way they do? Set up an experiment to run that. And that's kind of the example I give here on my board. So maybe through the course of my Op, my scientific method, I observed that plants grow, and my question become, became, why do plants grow the way they do? What is it that allows them to grow as well as they do? And so I did some research on plants and all that and what they need, and hey, common thing, they all need water. Who would have thunk? So what I decided to check is, okay, is it just water or is it some, just some liquid that they need? So my hypothesis is going to be related to the types of liquids that they are given. So let's set this up. I have four plants. I'm going to give one of them water. I'm going to give one of them Pepsi. I'm going to give one of them coffee. And I'm going to give one of them orange juice. Good old orange juice. All right. Now, based on this, maybe my hypothesis is that the plant with the orange juice is going to grow the best. That's my hypothesis. Well, as we know, now the next step is to experiment. So how do we do that? How do we set up a good experiment? Well, there are four things we need to keep in mind. Now, the first three are ones we definitely talk about in class and talk about the difference between them. This one, we don't necessarily talk in terms of our notes about in class, but it does mean it's not important. It is super important. It's just a little bit different than those. Now, these are our test plants. So they are test groups. But notice that each one has a different liquid. So that means that they are each their own test group. One of them is considered the control group. Any guesses? Mm -hmm. I know I'm kind of doing the door of the explorer thing. What do you think will occur? So first let's define what the control group is. <clears throat> it is what's considered normal circumstances. Normal circumstances. That means that we know what will happen to that particular test group because the conditions given to it are all normal, what we would expect to see. The reason why we want a normal group is because it allows us the chance to have a comparison group when we compare things that are not considered normal to see if it's better or worse. So our control group is going to be water because we know plants grow with water. So that is our control group. Plants outside, it rains down. They get water, they grow. We know that plants need water to grow. Now before anyone says, but Miss Pomar, what about those other things? They're not water. No, but read the ingredients. Each one of them contains water. Mm -hmm. So I know plants need water. That's the normal. That is my control group. Now the reason why we always want to have this is because it gives us something to compare to. Each of these other test groups, we're going to compare their growth to the control group's growth. We know this should grow. We know this should grow well. So does coffee allow the plants to grow better or worse than normal? Does coffee, sorry, Pepsi, coffee, does it allow it to grow better or worse than normal. What about orange juice? 
Does it allow the plant to grow better or worse than normal? So that's why the control group is super important. It gives you a known variable, a known thing that you can compare your results to. If I didn't have water here, if I had milk, then okay, I can tell how these all factor in against each other, but how do I know how they factor in against what plants do on their own, what they do naturally or normally? So you want to have your control group. All right. The next are the independent and the dependent variables. Now we know the term independent means, you know, fine on its own, it's all good, doesn't rely on anything, whereas dependent is it does rely on something. And these two go hand in hand. The independent variable is the variable that you, as the experimenter, is choosing to do differently. So it's what you are testing. What you are testing. What you're testing. All right. What are we testing? What are we choosing to do differently in this experiment? We are choosing to use different liquids. So the liquids are my independent variable. It's what I, as the experimenter, am testing. What am I doing differently? I am choosing to give this plant water. I am choosing instead to give this plant Pepsi to test how the Pepsi will affect the plant. I am choosing to give this plant coffee and test how the coffee will affect it. I am choosing to do OJ, orange juice, with this plant and see how that affects it. All right. Well, remember, my hypothesis I said was that the orange juice plant will grow the best. So if you want to put that into an if-then statement, if I give a plant orange juice, then it will grow taller. So it will grow the best. The dependent variable is reliance on the independent variable. It changes in response to the independent variable. So it changes in response. In other words, it's what you are measuring or looking for. So if this is an, an experiment on how different liquids a plant, a plant <laughs> affect plant growth, then what I'm going to look at is how tall they grow. So that is my dependent variable is what I am measuring. I'm going to measure the plant height. I can't choose how the plants are going to grow. I can't say that one is going to grow seven centimeters by the end of the week. This one's going to grow two centimeters by the end of the week. That one's going to grow 15 centimeters by the end of the week. I can't choose that. How much they grow is going to be directly related to what liquid they receive. So they are going to change, their heights are going to change in response to the liquids I'm testing. So the dependent variable is what are you measuring? I am measuring plant height in response to the independent variable, which is the different liquids. So far, so good? All right. And again, we see this reflected in the hypothesis. If I give a plant orange juice, this particular liquid, then the plant will grow taller. So we're measuring the height based on the liquids given. So far, so good? All right. Now control variables, there's no one set thing. Like these all have one particular thing, one normal group, one type of thing that we're testing, one thing that we're measuring. 
control variables are everything else. Remember, we said that in science, the experiments need to be highly controlled. We only want to test one variable at a time, in this case, the liquids. And the reason for that is if you test or if you have five different things that are changing among the, sorry, Ripley wants a belly rub. If you are testing five different variables, how do you know which one is actually causing your outcome? So that's why everything else in the experiment needs to be controlled. It needs to be the same across every single test group. So control variables are what you're not testing. You want it to be kept the same throughout every single one of these. So what are some things we want to keep the same? Well, we want to use the same type of plants for each one. Type of plants. We want to make sure that they're all given the same amount of liquid. We're changing the type of liquid, so we don't want to change the amount of liquid. So amount. of liquid, I want to make sure they all get the same amount of sunlight. Amount of sun, I want to make sure that they're all kept at the same temperature. Same temperature. And again, the reason for this, oh, same type of soil. So that means that the pH, the mineral levels in the soil are all going to be the same. The point of having a controlled experiment is to test your hypothesis. I believe that the type of liquid is going to have a big effect on plant growth, which is why I am testing water, Pepsi, coffee, orange juice. However, if I use different kinds of plants as well as different kinds of liquids, maybe one type of plant will grow better in response to one and then another type of plant might grow better in response to another. If I use different amounts of liquid, maybe I only give this guy a tablespoon of water versus the coffee, which gets a full cup. Well, that's going to affect how much water, how much of the liquid is available to them and thus how much they can use for growth. Same with the amount of sun. If I change and say, well, this water or this plant with water gets two hours of sunlight, Pepsi gets five hours of sunlight, coffee gets three hours of sunlight, and orange juice is gonna get eight hours of sunlight. That's going to affect their rate of photosynthesis and thus affect their growth. Same with temperature, same with the soil. All those things can have an effect on how plants grow because it affects their nutrients, it affects what they need for photosynthesis, and thus affects their glucose and their energy levels. So I want to keep all of those the same. This way, when I see a clear difference in the heights of these plants, maybe at the end of the experiment, this guy's all the way up there, this guy died completely. He didn't really grow that well, and he stayed about the same. Since I only changed the liquids and none of these other factors, that tells me something about what affected the plant growth. Something about the Pepsi was just really, really bad for the plants and caused the entire thing to die. The coffee, it survived, but it didn't really grow any bigger, and actually it kind of shrunk a little bit. So something took some nutrients away from the plant and harmed it, as a, but not as bad as the Pepsi did. The orange juice, it was fine. It didn't really grow anymore, but it also didn't have any negative effects. It didn't shrink. It didn't die. It didn't become less healthy. But the one with the water it grew taller. So that tells me out of all of these, first of all, my hypothesis was wrong. The plant with the orange juice did not grow the tallest, but the one about with the water did. So that tells me that, yeah, 
assuming everything else is the same, the type of liquid does matter. And water is better than all of those. So that's why I want to keep it as a controlled experiment. All right. So yeah, I hope that helps. I hope that you are nice and educated in the ways of variables. And yeah, stay safe, stay healthy. And until next time, you guys, take care.